Welcome back to The Physician Gardener, where we discuss all things health and wellness. Today is pillar five in our lifestyle medicine series, and we will be discussing avoidance of risky substances. Now, this isn't going to go in depth on all risky substances. We all know to avoid illegal drugs. So I'm going to focus on the legal drugs, basically, um, tobacco and alcohol. Yes, those are considered drugs. Tobacco is considered the leading cause of preventable disease and death in the United States. Smoking leads to or worsens heart disease, cancer, diabetes, uh, strokes, erectile dysfunction, immune function, rheumatoid arthritis, and so on and so forth. Quitting smoking has been shown to decrease your risk of heart disease and heart attacks by 50% within the first year. It also decreases your risk of stroke back to baseline, um, I meaning equal to that of a non-smoker within two to five years of quitting. Your lung cancer risk is decreased or cut in half by year 10 of quitting smoking. So there's definitely benefits to quitting smoking. So if you don't smoke, don't start. And if you do smoke, ask your doctor about some ways to help you quit. Um, there's lots of counseling groups and support groups out there if you want like a community environment and others to support you in your quitting journey. Um, I know in South Carolina, we have the 1-800-QUIT-NOW, which is a free service offered by the state of South Carolina, I believe, um, to help support you in your quit smoking journey. I'm not sure if there is a national line, um, but it wouldn't hurt for you to Google that. You can also speak to your physician about um, various medications to help quit smoking. There's nicotine patch, gum, lozenges. There's uh, varincycline, also known as Chantix, bupropion, also known as Zyban or Welbutrin, which all have pretty good evidence for helping people quit smoking compared to placebo. Um, so definitely look into your options. Um, if quitting smoking is something that has been on your mind and something that you would like to do, there are means for support for you in that journey because it is a journey and don't feel bad if you tried to quit cold turkey and it didn't work out. Most people who quit cold turkey are going to have a relapse, but the more you try, the more likely you are to be successful. Now, alcohol is a whole nother beast. Um, alcohol has a wide range of, uh, use to risk, I guess I would say, because there are some people who can, you know, go out and drink more than what the recommended limits are and be just fine and not drunk what with whatever metabolism they have. And then there's other people who get drunk off one beverage. Um, so don't compare yourself to anyone else. Know your limits, of course. Um, but in speaking in purely scientific terms, the national recommendations for alcohol would be for a woman, one standard drink per day is considered to be like a safe limit. Um, and for a man, it's two standard drinks per day. A standard drink is 12 ounces of beer, five ounces of wine, or 1.5 ounces of hard liquor or spirits. Um, and so if you drink more than that, that doesn't mean you have alcoholism. But once you get into greater than three drinks a day for a woman or greater than four drinks a day for a man, then it is considered at-risk alcohol use. If you're drinking more than four drinks in two hours for a woman or five drinks in two hours for a man, then that's considered binge drinking. Um, so you see there's a spectrum of allowable limits. Um, and people who are at high risk for alcohol use disorder, um, also known basically synonymous with alcoholism would be people who are binge drinking or who are having more than the rec recommended number of drinks multiple days per week. I strongly encourage if you think you may have alcohol use disorder to speak to your doctor about this, about the safest, you want to discuss the safest ways to cut down or limit your drinking. Um, with your physician because if you are a heavy drinker it is not safe to quit cold turkey that can lead to seizures um and other like high blood pressure palpitations all kinds of side effects um of alcohol 
Um, so definitely if you're considering quitting and you think you might have a problem, talk to your doctor first. There's also lots of group support for alcohol use disorder, like Alcoholics Anonymous. There's often church groups um, and other community support. There's online support. Um, so definitely utilize your resources. Um, and as, as I mentioned before, speak to a professional if needed. That's pretty much it for today. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or feedback. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and follow me on Instagram at The Physician Gardener.